We are on the western side of Chicago on this beautiful sunny day and uh, on the right here is the Bohemian National Cemetery. It's the place where I did my very first video. But uh, we're here today to visit someone here at Montrose Cemetery right across the street. And that would be Iva Taguri, otherwise known as Tokyo Rose in World War II. We're in. This is Stephen Lodgen. Uh, Stephen uh, was a well-known mechanic here in town in West Rogers Park. And uh, sadly, he was, he was killed in June of 2018, just over two years ago, in a motorcycle accident. Not his fault, as it is in most cases, the drivers, but uh, in this case, uh, Stephen was in Edgebrook sitting, I think he was at a stoplight, and uh, he was rear-ended by a hit-and-run driver. And to my knowledge, they have not found that person. I don't understand why people, you know, if, if it's an accident, well, they just, you hear about this so much, these cowards, they, they run away. Anyway, that person will have to live with that the rest of their lives. It was a small black car, and if anyone sees this uh, video that has any information, please call the Chicago, Chicago Police Department. But uh, for Stephen, I uh, hope you uh, are resting in peace. It is Sunday, October 11th, just before Halloween. And for Walter Cruz, it looks like the, uh, the family's been out here. It's nice uh, to be remembered and in a festive way, I guess. A lot of faces and pictures here. James Carlton Rogers, 1954 to 2011. Some nice flowers. Yannette Flores, January 23rd, 1980, January 5th, 2018. Beautiful woman, taken away so early. This is Patterson and Darlene, and they are both still alive. And I'm going to block out their uh, the year they were born information, just in case. But uh, you don't see this too often. They've got the picture, they've got the, everything is all set and ready to go. So uh, if you guys see this, Darlene or Patterson, uh, hope you stay healthy for a long time. But uh, when you are here, end up here, uh, it's a nice spot. So stay healthy, everybody. William David, his nickname was Billy. He had uh, just graduated college at DePaul University in uh, 1996, and he died in 1997, August 16th. Not sure what happened. I looked it up. I couldn't find anything, but rest in peace. A beautiful statue of an angel leading a little girl, presumably to heaven. Uh, this is a father and son, last name Baba. 
Father Eshe. Eshe passed away uh, a year, just almost exactly a year after his son Bob passed away, 2008. Could it have been from heartbreak? Possibly. Father and son together. Iva Taguri. Iva Taguri was born in Los Angeles, and she was um, she was an American citizen, and uh, she went to school in um, Los Angeles. She was a graduate of UCLA. And from there, she was in the medical field, and I think she was going to be a doctor. And her uh, aunt, who was in Japan, became uh, very sick, and her mother was too ill to go to see her, because that was the custom. You had to help your, uh, your relatives. And uh, so she... Uh, uh, Iva went and it was just before the outbreak of uh, the Japanese entering World War II and uh, when she tried to get back and it was literally a week before the attack on Pearl Harbor the infamous day December 7th 1941 and she could not. Uh, they were. They said your your um, your citizenship is in question. We're just not sure. And they, she couldn't get on the last ship. Of course, she didn't know it would be the last ship. And then she was really stuck. So what happened was, she had to obviously find work. Um, and she was the fir the very first thing that happened is the secret police came and they asked her or they told her to change renounce her american citizenship which she would not do so uh she already put herself in a tough situation there and by doing that the family started getting harassed literally as she was walking in the neighborhood they would throw rocks chase her with sticks and she's she said I've got to uh, I've got to get out of here I'll move away she didn't want to inflict any more pain on her family so she ended up moving to the big city and I think it was Yokohama I'm not sure where but anyway she got a job with the uh, a Japanese newspaper news company it was a news company that was interpreting American news and uh, nothing propaganda and then from there she got a job as a typist with a company that was a radio broadcast a radio broadcast company and they were they were doing some propaganda of course she was she was trying to help um, the, the, this was run by POWs, American POWs, that were taken out of the camp, and those P and those American POWs were were news and uh, news reporters and broadcasters from America. So the Japanese wanted to use them, and under the point of a sword and a gun, they really didn't have a choice. So. The place she ended up was run by a major, Charles Cousins, who himself, with his team, was trying to actually sabotage with, from within, and also in the, in, in the process, aid and comfort U.S. Uh, servicemen that were serving in the Pacific Theater by broadcasting comforting music and 
he decided to uh, pick, pluck uh, Iva out of the group to get a female voice uh, into the uh, into the program, and she did it, um, and together they tried to make a laughing stock out of the show. Uh, they really did not heavily, you know, they weren't doing a lot of heavy propaganda. It was mostly music. You know, there's a few things they were doing. They had to do without, you know, they didn't want to blow the cover of the entire program. So the here's where it gets interesting. Tokyo Rose is really a myth. It's kind of like Rosie the Riveter in that uh, the Tokyo Rose, the name, there was nobody named Tokyo Rose. That was just kind of the name that represented these women who would speak English and do these programs from Japan to be broadcast on shortwave over the ocean so all the guys on the ships, service, uh, the Americans would hear them. They all loved it, actually. But of course, some of the women, there were 20 women from all different locations in Japan doing this, uh, all kinds of programs. And some of them were very, they would really needle them. You know, your, your girlfriend left you, you're never coming home, your ships are sinking. Um, some of them even got specific to naming pilots that they were going after that had just arrived from the States, you know, through a lot of intel. So there was, uh, there was a lot of that going on. But the, the show that she was involved in was called, with Charles, uh, Major Charles Cousins, was called the Zero Hour. And they, they kind of stayed away from a lot of that kind of stuff. And she did 340 some programs uh, through the war. And what happened was after the war was over, uh, she, and she had no idea what was going on in the States and the anti-sentiment. Uh, and she was actually tricked into, uh, for $2,000 to do a uh, news reporter interview with these two guys from the States that were staying in a hotel there. And they, got, they lured her over, they, they interviewed her for four hours and then they uh, they published this really bad article. Did not reflect. She thought she was going in there, and she thought she was somewhat beloved. And she said, "Oh yeah, I'm Tokyo Rose. I'll I'll play that uh, that part." Um, she, she wasn't a little bit gullible, very young. And the next thing you know, she gets arrested. And uh, the FBI spent a year uh, interrogating her and going through all this and really determined in the end that she was innocent and there was no, nothing she did wrong and somewhat exonerated. Uh, this is her grave, Iva's. Now it says here, um, Aikuko. I'm not sure if that's Japanese from Taguri or I don't know, but this uh, I'm 99.9 .9 sure that this is her grave. Find a grave shows it as this. I don't know why it says Aikuko, but 1916 is the date she was born, and uh, that matches up when she died. And guess what? Guess what day she was born in 1916? How ironic. I'm not kidding when I say July 4th. So she was all American. She would always say, a tiger doesn't change its stripes. I mean, even her husband, her her last name when she died was Dequino. De Aquino. Anyway, he tried to get her to change her citizenship for him. She wouldn't do it. Where the story really gets sad is that uh, when uh, she thought, everybody thought things settled down. We had Walter Winchell, who was very influential at the time, 
started uh, turning up the heat and getting a lot of anti, there was a ton of anti-sentiment uh, for Japanese people in the 40s and 50s and even the 60s. I remember growing up, I saw it. And uh, they, uh, they got, they, they arrested her again and they put her to trial. And the long and the short of it is they, they did get her on one count where, and it wasn't even, they reviewed all the transcripts of all the shows and they couldn't find anything. But they did, uh, they did find one, or it was testified, there were two Japanese guys from Japan that supposedly worked with her that said, she said one sentence that related to the sinking ships and how are you guys going to get home? because all your ships are sunk or something like that. So there was no real record of that, but that's what they went on and they convicted her. I'm not, um, as you say, publicity. I'm not, I'm not seeking for publicity. I'm seeking for honesty and truth though. I do, I wish, but uh, you know, I have hoped against hope that maybe these people would someday that's that's is that's the oriental stoicism that maybe if you wait long enough maybe the other side will admit later that they did in fact maybe told a little lie this year the two main witnesses against her both of them now successful businessmen admitted that under severe pressure from the u.s government they railroaded iva to prison they were coached every day for a month before the trial and threatened that unless they testified and withheld information that would help Iva, they might be on trial themselves. They now say she did not commit treason. Her name on the show, by the way, was Anne, Annie, or Anne, Orphan Anne. It wasn't even Tokyo Rose. And, uh, of course, uh, 10 years in prison and um, $10,000 fine. Just really, really terrible. She served six years. And then in the 70s and the 80s, uh, the tide shifted, public opinion started swinging the other way. There were books written and a lot of uh, a lot of the public sentiment swayed back to her and that's that was history is truth and uh, she lived in Chicago here worked downtown I think it was downtown at her family's gift shop candy shop and she lived out her days there she did some big interviews with 60 minutes and so forth so uh, the cool part of the story, the ending, is that uh, President Ford, as he was leaving office, uh, pardoned her, which, uh, and by the way, she was stripped of her U.S. citizenship when she was convicted. How unjust, along with the uh, Japanese internment camps. Her mother died there, by the way, and is buried here. Her name is, uh, I think it's Fumi. Uh, she died in 1942. Uh, and her father died in 72. Yeah, her mother died in the Japanese internment camp. And she didn't, she didn't even know it. Iva, nobody told her. She didn't find out until three years later after her death. Um, but she was pardoned as she got her citizenship back uh, way, way late. But she got it back and she lived out her days as a faithful American citizen true uh true to her belief so i have a taguri takino we uh hope you're resting in peace